Hello there, this is just a continuation now from where we left off last show. Um, and yeah, we just want to really carry on. Sorry, the, the, the camera keeps cutting me off after 10 minutes, so we're making the show 10 minutes because it takes too long to download. And it's a good length of time for these shows. But I just want to carry on by saying, you know, that um, I've got some great friends who I really respect in the Lord. But even they are not what I should be aiming at. I'm aiming at this, this scripture I read to you last week, 2 Corinthians uh, 3, 17 and 18, to be transfigured into the likeness of Jesus. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And I just want to prophesy freedom to you in the name of Jesus. Freedom in your church. I pray revival in your church. I pray the anointing of the Holy Spirit to come upon you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I just... In fact, someone has just been healed right now. Someone's back has just been healed of back pain. In Jesus' name. Just receive it right now in Jesus' name. Someone's left eye has just uh, received a healing. Some problem with your left eye. Hallelujah. Someone's had um, chronic pain in their um, forearm on the right arm, I think. Uh, forgive me if I got that wrong, but I think that someone had pain in their arm somewhere. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Someone's been healed of diabetes as well, right now, in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name, a curse or diabetes. Someone's been healed of paralysis as well, right now, in the name of Jesus. Someone who's been in a wheelchair. Be healed in Jesus' name. Get out of that wheelchair right now. All paralysis be gone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It's time for us folks to start walking in the freedom and the power and the anointing and the glory of God. It's time for us to throw out religion, throw out garbage, throw out sin, throw out anything that's holding you back because, and I'm prophesying to you now, we are in the last days we are living in the very, very last time. And I believe in this last day, we will see people my age, I'm 32, we will see the rise of the Antichrist, and I believe we will see the return of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And in these last days, there will be many false prophets who will arise, who will preach sermons that will itch your ears and people will be preaching things that make you feel good and I'm not going to mention any names because I don't believe that's my job but I will say there are churches mainly in America now that are preaching I believe now God be the judge of this but you need to test all things test don't believe me test what I say to you but I believe there are preachers who are preaching a wrong message they have twisted biblical prosperity into a money focused uh, theology money focused everything money 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 and it's not godly I don't believe it's right to be always speaking about prosperity in the financial side you know what true biblical prosperity is when I read the Bible true biblical prosperity is doing the will of God a hundred percent True biblical prosperity is when God will bless you by, you know, you being totally fulfilled, satisfied, fearing God, doing the will of God. And yes, he will bless you financially, thank God. But you know what? If you look at the Paul, you know, Paul in the book of Acts, there were many times he didn't have a lot of money. He said, I will be content with food and clothing. And what I'm hearing, it's, it frightens me, because I've seen people who go to meetings with these big ministries, they've got jets and everything. Now, there's nothing wrong with having jets. Praise God, I would love to have a jet. But, you know, come on, let's be, let's be real here. You know, these people are million millionaires, they're possibly even billion dollarairs, or whatever you want to call it. They've got millions of dollars and people I know, I actually know people, go to meetings in London when these big, big, big names come and they will go into debt. They will give money to these big people, you know, not big people, people with, they've, they've already got millions. 
you know, if you want to give, give to your local church. Give to people who perhaps don't have a lot of money. I'm, I'm sorry, but it, this disturbs me. Because I don't see it in the Bible. I do not see this in the Bible. We need to get back to talking about Jesus. And stop talking about money and putting people off the gospel. And let's stop talking about all this extra stuff that we've made up. That we've, you know, I, I was in America once, and someone said to me, a young girl, uh, I won't mention the names, but this young lady said to me something that really shocked me to the, it, it shook me to the core. You know, I was asking um, her dad some theological question, and she then said to me, John, it's all very interesting, but whatever happened to the love, just loving Jesus? And I thought, what? She's right. And it hit me. And I thought, I need to just forget all this stuff. Questions. The pre, pre, uh, what do you call it? You know, Jesus is going to be coming mid-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, or whatever trib. For those of you who aren't saved yet, you don't know that what that means. It's just theology when Jesus is going to come back. It doesn't matter all this stuff. We just need to get back to Jesus. We just need to, when, when we come together, we just need to talk about him. And we need to talk about him 24 hours a day, because there isn't anything more important. Yes, you know, we've got to work, we've got to do things. We've got to do our jobs and everything else. But, you can still be worshipping him in your mind, you see. And uh, we can still be doing, being obedient to him. Whenever you're meeting people, you can just be an atmosphere changer. Because we have to... Learn how to be atmosphere changers. Atmosphere changers, you know. And wherever we go, we can bring the presence of the Lord. Well, time is running out. I'm going to have to go soon. But I just want to remind you, you know, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. If you're in a church where there's no freedom, get out! Get out of there! Don't just keep torturing yourself. To, you know, and I'm not, not running to knock anyone, but we need the Holy Spirit. We need the power of God. We need the anointing. And I'm not saying I'm personally there. I'm nowhere near where I need to be. But my sufficiency is not from man. It's from God. You know, you can read earlier in Second Corinthians 3, verse 5. It says this. It says, Not that we are fit, qualified and sufficient in ability of ourselves to form personal judgments or to claim or count anything as coming from us but our power and ability and sufficiency are from God our power and ability and sufficiency are from God and that's true for me, I'm nothing without Jesus I'm nothing without him, I'm a big mess without him we need to be emptied so that we can be filled with him so that, you know, we can only truly be filled when we are truly emptied of all of us, all the self, all the self-life. I'm going to talk to you more about that later. I'm going to share something about that I believe the Lord wants me to share. How we need to die to ourselves. You know, Jesus told us to do that. And the Apostle Paul said, you know, he said, I die daily. He said, I no longer live, but, I, but Jesus lives in me. Galatians 2.20 I no longer live. You know, I'm not there, but I'm aiming in that direction. All I want is more of him. I want to be like Smith Wigglesworth. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, he just lived, breathed, and, and slept Jesus. And the miracles that happened in that man's life was awesome. I want to see that. I want that. And you need that. And if you don't know, if you don't know Jesus, you just pray right now, Jesus, help. Help, help simple one word prayer just say help Lord Jesus come into my life be my Lord be my saviour because without him you've got nothing you need him because otherwise you're going to go straight to hell all these other religions I'm sorry but there's no way apart from Jesus you know I love Muslims